Microplastics back in the news again this morning. The fact that they are tracking all the way up to the north, to the far north and to the northwest passage. Researchers fear the extent of their spread is worsening. And John Northcott is here with some new research that's uh, going to cause some concern today. John? Yeah, indeed, Heather. This was an 18-day expedition through the Northwest Passage. Now, we know, of course, there is plastic in great profusion in the Pacific Ocean, and we know it's washing up on our beaches, but these are microplastics. So this is everything from paint to plastic that has deteriorated to the point where sometimes it is even smaller than can be detected uh, even through the uh, most uh, precise scientific investigation. But here, a pristine northern wintry landscape. White snow, could anything be more pure? Well, as it turns out, it's full of plastic. Have a listen. Even knowing what uh, we knew about the concurrence of plastic in ice and, and the ubiquity of plastic, for us it was kind of a, a punch to the stomach to um, see what looked like a, a normal sea ice core uh, in such a beautiful, pristine environment, but just chock full of this, of this um, uh, material which is completely foreign to the to the environment so the cores they took were two and a half meters long so going very far into the ice measuring multiple years being able to do that so we look at the area that we're talking about here heather it really is far north it is the northwest mm -hmm. passage uh, and it is uh, the furthest north that they've able been to detect this and they were in a bay there it is where it was they thought it was relatively the Lancaster Sound, effectively. Uh, they thought it was uh, not only because it was far north, but also because the way it was located geographically, that it might be, compared to any other place in the world, cleaner and safer from the intrusions of these microplastics. But it turned out it wasn't the case. Uh, and I mean, that was a pretty graphic description, like a punch to the stomach when they, when they saw evidence of this. So is it because it is so isolated and so far north that this is particularly alarming, or are there other aspects as well? Well, a couple of things. Sea ice concentrates things. So it concentrates uh, plankton, it concentrates algae, and it concentrates, as we're now finding out, uh, plastic. So let's listen to that concentration aspect, and then I'll tell you why it is so important to what they're doing. One thing that's interesting about sea ice, it's a, it's kind of a concentrator of everything that's in the water. It's known to concentrate algae uh, because even after the ice forms, you actually get continual flushing of seawater through the ice. And in that process, you tend to build up more nutrients, more algae, uh, but also uh, apparently you start to build up microplastics as well. So there it is. They're able to find it there as a result. But what this means is that not only is it potentially being carried by water currents to areas that they thought was safe from microplastics, or at least relatively compared to the rest of the world, but this also raises the possibility, a distinct possibility, that these microplastics are airborne. They've mm. also found them in the Swiss Alps, and they found them in rainwater in Boulder, Colorado. So this is telling scientists, and this is where the sort of next step in this is, if it's in the air, it means we're breathing it. We are essentially, or potentially, filling our lungs with microplastics. There was a study done 20 years ago that indicated it might be a cause of lung cancer, and this is something now that they're really concerned about saying, you know what, it's not just washing up, it is in the air all around us, and if it's getting there into the Arctic air, imagine what it's doing in our cities and our more populated areas. And that's the next really concerning step in all of this. Okay, John, thank you okay. for all of that.